I'm Keith from Enrich Education um, and welcome to our webinar today. Our webinar is, the subject of our webinar is how to support an active recovery curriculum and physical literacy with school orienteering and outdoor learning. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to have a brief introduction to school orienteering. We're going to look at some examples of opportunities for orienteering in PE and games lessons. We're going to look at some opportunities for using orienteering within a range of other curriculum areas. And also um, for school orienteering outside of timetable time, so at lunch times and play times and after school. We're going to think about how orienteering and outdoor learning can fit in with the idea of an active recovery curriculum and also how school orienteering and outdoor learning fits in with the idea of physical literacy. We will have a chat facility running alongside the webinar, so if you've any queries, please do post them up. We'll either respond straight away or we'll get back to you following the webinar. Okay, so just to think about what is orienteering briefly. Orienteering is often associated with the great outdoors. Um, obviously, it can take place in highlands and in forests, but it works equally well in smaller settings urban environments, including parks, and of course on school sites, and that's what we'll be focusing on today. So in its simplest terms, orienteering involves participate, participants navigating between checkpoints or controls marked on a special orienteering map, and they use their orienteering map to locate control points, which are marked by orienteering markers. So these are some examples of orienteering maps of a school site. And obviously maps of a school site are custom made for each individual school. Orienteering maps are based on Ordnance Survey maps, slightly simplified. They have grid lines and you can see those on the maps uh, on the screen. Um, they also have shading to show different types of areas on the site. So for example, black denotes a building. And you can see that the maps use symbols and a key, and there's also a scale. And finally, if you look at the map on the right hand side of your screen, you can see that it shows the numbered orienteering control points located around the school site. So there are some examples of school orienteering maps. Orienteering control markers. Um, the control points on an orienteering in an orienteering course are marked by special orienteering markers. And these are some examples of markers for school orienteering. And you can see that the first two markers have pictures and sequences of numbers of, and letters. And that type of marker will be fixed in place around the school site as part of a permanent orienteering course. And the third marker, the marker on the right hand side, is slightly different. As this wouldn't be fixed in place, it could be put at any location around the school site or even within the school building. Its locations could be marked on a customizable orienteering map. And information can be added to this type of marker. It could be drawn or stuck on or written on. And you can also see that it utilizes QR code technology. So participants have to record information from the control marker to show that they visited the control point. For smaller orienteering courses, such as those on school sites, Markers like these, which contain lots of different potential codes, so for example, series of letters, numbers and pictures, provide an almost unlimited number of different permutations of information that children need to collect from each marker. So they could be collecting the second letter or the fourth number or the third letter or all four marker numbers, etc. 
This means that children will never become too familiar with the course and the markers, and that they'll also always have to visit the markers to collect the information that they need. These letter and number combination, combinations also provide lots of potential to be used within cross-curricular activities, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail later. So having the infrastructure for orienteering and school installed at a school site opens up a wealth of opportunities for activities, and they range from conventional orienteering to other outdoor activities that utilize the school's orienteering maps and markers. And there are also lots of associated activities that can be used to introduce children to orienteering so that when they start to do full orienteering activities, they can take part in them with confidence. So let's start by looking at examples of how a school's orienteering course can be used within PE and games lessons. The first activity we're going to look at is an activity called Beanbag Grab. And it's an example of a simple activity that you can use to familiarise children with your orienteering map and control markers. So it's a precursor to introducing full orienteering activities. You could use all of the control points in your course for this game, but you probably just want to use a selection. And this applies to many of the school orienteering activities, as we'll see as we look at some more examples. So we've done a simple animation to illustrate beanbag grab. So children are in teams and they're given a set of control points that they must locate with their map. Each team's given a different colour and there are several beanbags at each of the control points. The idea is for the team to run to the control point, collect a beanbag if there's one there that's in their team's colour at the control point. So you can see that the blue team collects the blue bean bags, and the red team the red bean bags, and the green team the green bean bags as they go to each of the specified control points on their map. Okay, if you're playing this game competitively, the first team to collect all the bean bags in their team's colour wins the game. Teams can visit the control points in whatever order they choose, and it's also up to the individual team to organise how they collect the beanbags. Games like Beanbag Grab can give children the understanding and skills to confidently move on to full orienteering activities. So we can now look at what a more conventional orienteering activity might look like when it's used in a school setting and again, we've done a simple animation to illustrate this. So each team of children is given a course card, which tells them which control points they must visit and the information that they must record from the control marker. So, for example, the red team must locate control points 2, 13 and 12 using their school orienteering maps. And um, at each of these control points, they have to record the third number from the sequence of numbers on the control marker. This activity has an added challenge where teams have to use the numbers they've collected in a sum. So you can see the teams visit with their control cards, they visit the specified markers, and at each marker, they fill in the information could be the first or the second or the third numbers that specified on the control markers, and then they use them in a sum. So like beanbag grab, this is a physical activity with children running around an orienteering course, and it has the same problem solving and team working elements, but with the added elements of having to record information from the markers at each of the control points. This game illustrates how the numbers uh, and letter sequences on the control marker give you pretty much unlimited potential for using your orienteering course on multiple occasions for different activities. And these just show you a bit more clearly examples of control markers and of control course cards. 
I'm just going to ask you to pause for a minute, just to think about the scope for physical activity in the type of orienteering session that we just looked at. And also the sort of skills that children might develop by taking part in this type of session. So just, just take a minute to reflect on that. What sort of physical activities would be involved for children in that sort of session? And also what sort of skills might they develop by taking part in the session? OK, well, in terms of physical activities, obviously there's running and walking are the main ones and they would help children to develop speed and to develop stamina. In terms of skills, um, team working is key to this sort of activity. So, for example, does the whole team go to each control point or do different team members visit different control points? Uh, there's a lot of problem solving involved. So the control points can be visited in any order. Teams have to think of the best route that they take and which order to visit the control points. And there's also all of the map reading and navigation skills involved. So lots of physical activity, but also lots of skills developed in these activities. We're now gonna look at some examples of how a school can use its orienteering map and course within curriculum areas other than PE and games. When we're looking at cross-curricular orienteering, it's important to take into account everything that the research tells us about the link between physical activity and time spent outdoors and effective learning. So as well as creating opportunities in PE and games lessons and supporting children's physical activity and well-being, Orienteering can also help children to be more effective learners in maths, English, science, history, geography, etc. Lessons right across the whole curriculum. We're going to start by looking at an example of an English activity. And this is an activity that uses orienteering to support spelling. And it focuses on words from the year five, six word list from the English national curriculum, although you could use any list of words. Children have an orienteering course card, which is based on one of the words. The word has several missing letters, and above each missing letter is the number of a control point. Using their orienteering map, children locate the control point, and they have to insert the first letter in this instance, it could be the second or the third, from the control marker to fill in the specific missing letter from the word. So, can see um, on their control card that they have the numbers of the control markers above the missing letters. And as they visit each control marker, so control marker one, the first letter is C, they fill that in on their control card. And then they go to control marker two. And the first letter is D, which they fill in on their control card. Control marker 10, where they fill in the T. And then finally, control marker 15, where they fill in the N to complete the word. Children might be able to complete the word without visiting all of the control markers, and that's fine. When they complete a word, they can move on to the next word on the course card. And the idea with this activity is to get children actively involved in constructing a word rather than just learning it by rote. As with lots of the cross-curricular orienteering activities, this activity could build on work that children have done in class. So, for example, they could prepare for the activity by doing look, say, cover, write and check with some of the words. Um, and it can also lead on to follow up work. So, for example, children could compose sentences that include some of the words that they've constructed through this activity. OK, the next activity that we're going to look at is a simple phonics activity, and that reinforces children's ability to identify rhyme, which is an important foundation for successful phonics. 
And this activity shows how orienteering can be adapted for younger children. So in this case, four or five year olds, particularly when the orienteering control markers incorporate pictures. The example we're gonna look at uses a set of control markers that are specifically designed for early number and phonics activities. But you can also use the markers that older children use for activities with EYFS children. So this activity involves children running, taking a picture or an object from a selection, and then finding a control marker which has a picture that rhymes with it. So you can see the children run, they collect a card, or it could be an object, and then they have to run around the markers and find the marker that has a picture that rhymes with their card. So car and star, phone and bone, bed and chair, etc. Okay, the next activity is a maths activity and it makes use of the numbers on the orienteering control markers. It's a problem solving activity where children are given a target number. They then visit up to three orienteering control markers and select numbers from the markers, which they have to include in a sum. So the sum has to get them to their target number as its answer. So in this case, the target number is 10. Children visit three markers and they have to choose numbers to use in a sum that's going to get them to that target of 10. So from the first marker they go to, which is marker two, they put the number of the marker on the control card and they choose number seven from that marker. They then go to number five, fill in the number on the control card and choose number four from that marker. And then marker one and they choose number one from that marker. So they've got three numbers to use in their sum to get them to their target number. So seven plus four, take away one, gets them to the target number of 10. This sort of activity can be used with young children, but it can easily be adapted for older children by increasing the challenge. So for example, giving bigger targets or asking children to use two numbers from the control marker so they create two digit numbers to use in this sum. Okay, so the next activity that we're gonna look at is a science activity, and it involves groups of children collecting pictures of a skeleton from orienteering control points, and then reconstructing the whole skeleton once they've collected all of the parts. So children use the individual pictures to reconstruct a full skeleton. They go around orienteering control points and at each control point, there's a different part of the skeleton for them to bring back to their central location. And when they've done that, they can use each of the parts to reconstruct a full skeleton. And as a follow-up activity, children can use the label uh, cards, can use label cards with the skeleton parts names on them to label their skeleton. I'll just leave up this slide for a minute or two before showing you the answers and you can test out your own scientific knowledge. Okay, so you can see the children collecting a label card and using it to label the different parts on the skeleton that they reconstructed. Okay, as well as creating additional opportunities for children to be physically active outside of doors and to develop their PE skills, orienteering also gives children fantastic opportunities to develop the practical map reading skills. So navigating the route 
using maps and keys and symbols and grid references. However, orienteering can also be used to reinforce children's knowledge of key facts in geography or in any other subject. So in this case, the activity reinforces locational knowledge and in particular children's knowledge of the main European cities. So in this game, groups of children are given a specific series of markers to visit and each one of those markers is linked to a European country. At each of the markers, they have to select from a number of cities on their activity sheet and record the first letter from the marker next to the city to show that it's in the country linked to that marker. This sort of activity would obviously not be a first teaching activity if we used to reinforce and revise learning from previous activities. So for example, work using a European atlas. Children could also take an atlas around with them to help them complete the activity. So children have a control card, which gives them the numbers of control points shown on their map that they have to visit. And each of those control points is designated to a European country. So when children visit the control point one, that designated country is Belgium. And they have to look at the first letter on the control marker and write that next to any cities that are in Belgium. So Bruges and Antwerp. And control point three, the designated country is Spain. So they have to use the first letter on the marker against any Spanish cities. We've got Seville and Madrid. And then marker five is the Netherlands. And they fill in an E against Amsterdam and The Hague and so on. So orienteering can definitely enhance a school's PE and games curriculum, but it also has great potential to be extended into other curriculum areas. There's also a wealth of opportunities for using orienteering courses outside of curriculum time. So for example, the markers or a selection of the markers can easily be used for simple playground games, particularly if these are supported by children who are playground leaders. Having an orienteering course and map installed at your school opens up opportunities for after school clubs and competitions, including competitions with other schools or within your school. And you can even, even use your orienteering map and markers to map out different courses for your daily mile. We're going to go on to look now at orienteering within an active recovery curriculum. Before we specifically look at what could be included in an active recovery curriculum, can I ask you just to take a minute to think about any measures, particularly measures that involve physical activity that you've introduced into your schools to support recovery after COVID and to help children become more resilient during the pandemic. So just reflect on any measures that your school has introduced um, to help this idea of a recovery curriculum. Okay, most schools have adapted their curriculum in some way as part of the response to COVID. Um, many schools have developed this idea of an active recovery curriculum, which prioritizes physical activity and time outdoors at school as a way to support children's recovery following the COVID lockdowns. There isn't a single model of an active recovery curriculum and schools will design their own curricula to suit their own contexts. However, when the Youth Sports Trust commissioned research, they found that there were some common features of most schools' active recovery curricula. And you can see those on the slide. So it includes things like increased time for physical activity in the school day, additional physical activity in other subjects, a focus on well-being and development within PE lessons, more extracurricular activities, and opportunities to try out new activities, and opportunities for children to be active every day. 
Their research also found that following lockdown restrictions, many pupils had reduced physical fitness, decreased well-being, low-level behavioural issues, and a loss of ability to concentrate in class. And this is consistent with, for example, Sports England's Active Lives survey, which showed a reduction in children's physical activity and engagement and enjoyment of sport during the lockdowns. So the Youth Sports Trust research found that by taking part in an active recovery curriculum, young children increased their physical activity and improved their well-being and academic progress. And the children also want to do more physical activity and would like to have more lessons outside. So let's think about how school orienteering and outdoor activity fits within the features of an active recovery curriculum. Well, if a school orienteering course is used to its full potential, it creates a wealth of new opportunities for children to be active, not only in lesson times, but also at play times, lunch times and after school. And this fits perfectly with an idea of an active recovery curriculum. It helps schools meet the targets of 30 minutes or even 60 minutes physical activity each day. Inactivity amongst children, as you all know well, was a challenge before COVID. Evidence from the Active Lives Survey suggests that this challenge increased due to COVID, and it showed that only 44% of children currently hitting that 60 minutes uh, target for physical activity each day, and 32% still do an average of less than an average of 30 minutes physical activity each day. Orienteering is a great way to get children active out of doors. And if you can take physical activity and learning out of doors, there's a lot of research that shows that this is really important to children's well-being. And as well as adding to the range and variety of activities that children can include in their PE and games curriculum, School orienteering is a great way of extending physical activity into other subjects of the curriculum. This not only increases the amount of physical activity that children take part in during the school day, but it also supports effective learning right across the curriculum. We're going to now look at how school orienteering fits in with the idea of physical literacy. The concept of physical literacy has been around since the 1990s. However, possibly due to the ongoing challenges of inactivity and obesity, combined with the effect of COVID, physical literacy has become increasingly prominent in current policy around health and education, with a more holistic focus on individuals' health and well-being. I'm just going to ask you to take a minute to reflect on what you think might be involved in physical literacy. What might physical literacy include? So just take a moment to, to think about that. Okay, the International Physical Literacy Association gives the following definition for physical literacy. Physical literacy can be described as the motivation, confidence, physical competence, knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life. So physical activity is a lifelong journey and it's unique to the individual. It enables an individual to enjoy, value, and understand physical activity, ensuring that physical activity continues to be an essential part of their life with all the benefits to health and well being that this can bring. So, how does school orienteering and outdoor learning contribute to the physical literacy journey of our children? Well, if you firstly think about motivation, um, orienteering can be positive and rewarding for all children. It involves a very inclusive type of physical activity, which all children can participate in. It can appeal to all children, including those who are difficult to engage in traditional sports. Courses can be adapted for wheelchair users. Tactile maps or guides can enable visually impaired children to participate. And shorter or simpler courses can be devised within regular courses. 
In terms of, orient of motivation, orienteering can also appeal to children's competitive nature so they can challenge themselves to complete a course as quickly and as accurately as possible or to compete against each other, to compete against another team. But it also enjoys, enables them to enjoy all the social benefits of cooperative teamwork. Orienteering contributes to the rich and varied range of physical challenges and experiences which should be included within a school's curriculum and it creates additional opportunities for children to experience and enjoy the outdoor environment. So a lot of all school orienteering does um, fit in with that idea of motivation which is key to physical literacy. Let's now think about confidence. Because orienteering is so inclusive, all children can make progress from their own level, experience success and gain confidence in the children in the physical abilities and also the problem solving skills. Through the teamwork involved in orienteering, children can develop confidence in their own leadership skills, as well as confidence in working cooperatively with each other. Physical competence, the skills involved in physical literacy. Well, in orienteering, you could describe orienteering as running with a purpose. So it's uniquely well-placed to motivate children to develop physical attributes such as stamina and speed and agility. In terms of knowledge and understanding, orienteering can support children's wider cognitive development. So problem-solving skills, planning ahead, evaluating their performance, and it also helps children develop understanding of basic map reading and navigation. And if we think about the elements of physical literacy, which is physical activities for life, orienteering can be used to deliver learning across the whole curriculum, and it helps extend children's physical activity beyond PE and games lessons. And because of this, it encourages children to see physical activity as an essential part of everyday life, and the fitness and stamina that children develop, together with the map reading and navigational skills, create the foundation for children to take part in a wide range of physical activities later in their lives. Physical literacy focuses on ensuring that activity is purposeful, engaging, relevant and rewarding, and school orienteering and outdoor learning has the potential to create a wide variety of physical challenges in which all children are motivated to take part and enjoy developing new skills, knowledge and understanding. And so it can therefore help schools ensure that all children get off to successful first steps along their physical literacy journeys. I'm just gonna to briefly touch on the guidance on PE and sports premium because schools need to have the practical means to introduce orienteering in a quality and sustainable way. And when you look at the DFE guidance on spending for PE and sports premium, there's a real close match with school orienteering. So the funding is supposed to help with the engagement of all pupils in regular physical activity, including involving and encouraging the least active children. And the funding should also support creating opportunities for active play at lunchtime and at playtime, including playtime sports leaders or peer mentors. And as we've seen, these are all things that are really close fit with school orienteering. Orienteering courses can also provide the basis for a school's active mile. And having a school course installed creates the potential for new sports clubs so it can be used to broaden the range of extracurricular activities and it offers new opportunities for competitions and tournament, both within the school and between schools. And finally, schools can take advantage of professional development opportunities for staff, which are associated with the introduction of orienteering. Um, so just to briefly conclude, we've looked at what's involved in school orienteering and how it can be used for activities within PE and games lessons, but also to deliver activities right across the curriculum. And um, we've also looked at the contributions that it can make to an active recovery curriculum, increasing opportunities for children to be active and take learning into the outdoor environment. And we've also looked at orienteering to see how it aligns with the idea 
of physical literacy by supporting children to develop motivation and confidence to take part in physical activity, a range of different skills and knowledge about physical activity, and finally helping physical activity to become part of children's lives in a way that will persist throughout their lives. The orienteering infrastructure, the maps, uh, orienteering markers, and the cross-curricular learning activities that I've shared with you today are all part of Enrich Education's orienteering package. However, there are many different ways that schools can introduce orienteering. And we're not suggesting that the only way it can be done is by using our products and resources. We hope that this webinar has given you some ideas around school orienteering and encourage you to think seriously about introducing orienteering into your curriculum, however you choose to do this. If you'd like to contact us about any of our products and services, we'll be sending a follow-up email together with some resources and a special discount code to everyone who booked onto the webinar today. We're also doing a free draw for all participants um, to win a download of our Active Reading for Pleasure resource, which contains a wealth of active games linked to the Harry Potter, to episodes in the Harry Potter novels. And we'll announce the winner with our follow-up email today. So I hope that this webinar has been useful for you and I hope it's given you some food for thought. Thanks very much for attending. We will have the chat facility continuing to run for a time, so please do feel free to use it to ask questions or to give feedback. So thank you again for taking part.